Hi, this is Manira uh, from Chicagoland. How are you? Um, I'm here with Leslie, and she is uh, from Indiana, and she's an awesome lady that I have met and spoke to, and I think she has something to share with us. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Manira. How are you? Hi, Manira. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. I uh, spoke to you a little bit about your aspirations and your dreams. And, you know, I thought I should interview you because you are an awesome wo woman. And I am in search for <laughs> awesome women. So uh, I'm going to interview you and you can just speak what you want. Um, tell us what you like, what you don't like, and, you know, we'll go from there. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm originally from Indiana. I have my Indiana shirt on today. Great. I've lived in Ohio. I've moved back to Indiana, but mostly Indiana is where I am from. Okay. And uh, tell us more. Your family, and business, work? Let's see. I come from a family of four kids. I'm the oldest of four kids. Um, I have three kids of my own. I have a granddaughter. I started out as a cosmetologist and worked there until my first child was born. And since then, I've been a stay-at-home mom. Great. Great. And uh, so you said you had a granddaughter? Yes. Last oh. year. She turned a year old. Great. And her name? Her name is Penelope. Awesome. She sounds yeah. like a princess. Uh, she can be. <laughs> she's also kind of a tomboy but she's only a year old well i'll care then she'll grow into being a princess exactly <laughs> okay uh what, what what are your aspirations what are your dreams well i just re did my life about six months ago and now all I want to do is help people. And I want to start by doing it on the internet. Okay. So explain redid your life. Um, well, I had a really rough year last year and I ended up developing a website about it. And it tells the whole story of the whole year, a little bit of background also. Um, it started out with my daughter after she had the baby. She had two close calls and could have died at the time. Then in April, my husband died suddenly, totally unexpectedly. I'm so sorry. So then, well, thank you very much. So the next couple of months, I was reexamining my life, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, um, try to find some direction. And I decided I didn't like the person who I had become and decided I was going to make some changes. And once I did, I started, I got over my husband's death much quicker than I ever thought. I've moved on with my life. Um, I, I'm in a new relationship and I also had a stroke. Oh, wow. There are lots of things going on. Yes. And how you recovered from your stroke? What's going on with that? Well, I'm still in the recovery process. Um, I had my stroke June, or no, sorry, my mind's still not clear all the time. I had the stroke July 19th, which happened to be my middle sister's birthday. And I went in the hospital and it was, um, it affected my right side, but it didn't um, affect it severely. I was able to do some therapy in the hospital. And by the time I was ready to leave after those five days, it, I still had work to do, but it wasn't too bad. So I went home and recuperated a little bit. And in, let's see, I left the hospital on Monday. On Friday, I went back in. I had more severe um, trouble with my right side. And the doctors said that I didn't have another stroke, but it was a continuation of the first stroke. 
So the recovery from it has been long and um, very grueling. <laughs> it takes a lot to recover from a stroke and I'm still recovering. I have more mobility, but I'm still limited. Well, I hope you full recovery. Thank you. It'll, it'll be here. You know, it's coming. <laughs> so uh, tell us about the new relationship, if you want. Um, that's a whole nother subject that we might want to deal with another day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, but it's good, right? Because um, I started um, having a relationship with my brother-in-law. It's good. I, I kind of lost you. No, I'm here. But yes, we have a very good relationship. Okay. I kind of lost that last part. You asked if it was good? Yes. Yes. This relationship is totally fantastic. It has totally changed my life and my perspective. And yes, it's very good. That's good. That's good. We want a positive person in your life, okay? Yes, exactly. I am asking. I'm not, not to be nosy. But no, so one, one, day. <laughs> one thing that you said was you want to help people. So do you already have a website first? Is that what you're saying? I um, late May, early June, I decided I was going to start a website. Never done anything like that before in my life. I'd always wanted to. Um, so I got it started, got the design and how I wanted it to be. And then I had the stroke. So that was kind of on hold for a while. And I think about November, I started actually writing posts and... and in mid-December, I published. So my website, CocosCrazyLife.com, is up and running. Say the name again one more time. It's Coco's Crazy Life. Coco's Crazy Life. And Coco is spelled with a C-O-C-O? C-O-C-O. Okay. That's, that is the name that um, my kids adopted for me to be called Grandma by my new grandbaby because I couldn't stand the thought of being called Grandma yet. <laughs> okay so that's where it came from okay wonderful okay so tell me you said something about uh, you said that you want to help people yeah how and what is your what is your thought well from? okay when after my husband died in may i mean he died april 29th but in may we had a celebration of life and people started leaving and i got back to my normal life whatever that is and started doing some searches on the web just to see if there were like widow support groups or what happens after your husband dies, that kind of thing. And I really did not um, find very much. Since then, I've come across more groups and things, but at the time, I couldn't find very much. So that's really why I decided to start the website, Coco's Crazy Life, was to help widows deal with accepting and all of that and um i've joined some groups some of them are a little crazy some of them are very depressing some of them are helpful but i would rather be a more positive influence than just somebody's shoulder to cry on if that makes sense yes Okay. I, I want to help people change their lives too, because there's so much more to life than being a widow. That is so true. That is so true. Yes. And, <laughs> so, and I think even though I haven't gone through it, um, I have lost my ex-husband, my, uh -huh. my kids. And uh, mm -hmm. so we went through that roller coaster. And, but I spent 35, I was in a relationship with him, even though I was divorced, you know. Sure, but sure with the kids for the kids with the kids so like a democracy you know for the right by the kids yes. <laughs> so yes exactly so the thing was that i had a relationship with him for 35 years had i been married to him it would have been our 35th anniversary mm -hmm. and so you go through those emotional roller coasters and i know exactly i i don't know exactly what your pain is but i know of what you mean right so what do you, what are your thoughts on helping? How are you going to find your people? How are you going to reach out to these? I mean, I know people, um, church groups have these um, 
groups and they have these uh, sessions where widows and all of them come together and they just talk because I've, I've heard other widows saying that I'm, I, I felt this and I felt those emotions, but I, I didn't realize that everybody else could feel it too until I went to the group. Mm -hmm. So how, how is your group going to be different? How is my group going to be different? Um, that's a very good question. I think I would like to help widows, widowers deal with the loss of their spouse, but also more importantly to get, I don't want to keep saying get on with their life because that sounds like you're rushing them through the grieving and that's not what I mean at all. Um, to get on with their life in a positive way without forgetting their spouse. Okay. I guess, I guess that would be one way. So you basically want to help them to take the next step in their life regardless right. of the situation at hand. I mean, you're not saying forget your spouse because this person was part of your life. What you're saying is let's take the next step so that you are not living in grief, but you're enjoying the, the, the life you have left. Exactly. And my husband and I had talked to that about that many times in our almost 30. Well, we were together 30 years. We were almost married 29 years. It was just um, like a month and a half short of 29 years. But we talked about that. And we always said, if one of us passed, the other should go on with their life and be happy and not dwell on it. And the friends died. Yes, we miss them. But there's more to life than mourning the dead. True. True. I understand that. I, okay. I understand that. So, um, so are you adding more post, posts on your, excuse me, on your website or what, what's going on with that? Are you going to add more video blogs or? I'm going to do a little bit of everything actually. Um, now that I'm a little bit more mobile and a little bit more clear headed, I plan on doing some video posts. I will always do post. I love to write. Um, there are many, 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 many subjects I can write about. Um, one big thing is um, I would like to start helping communicate with their family better because I noticed after, especially after the stroke and after I started this new relationship, that people would have preconceived notions of things, not necessarily anything I said, but they think because they know me, they know about me and a lot of the things that they thought were completely wrong and that was mostly in fact because they didn't talk about it so I would like to be able to help people to communicate more effectively okay so that's good so um you know I'm a John Maxwell certified coach and I do workshops on everyone communicates people mm -hmm act because you know yes. communication is a lot of noise but how do exactly. you so if you ever want to join my mastermind group then please do so okay. <laughs> you can yes from, i will you, you know i will learn from me to learn from, from each other's right but uh -huh. but that's the thing is like a lot of this i guess he wrote the book because he realized that this was becoming an epidemic it is understanding anything and what one person says becomes the uh, you know the third person's um it grounds in it's grounded in the mind so what happens is they don't, don't they just judge the person they're talking about because of that one comment and that's not how it's yes. supposed to be and i know religions exactly they don't do that but we do, we're just human and we do that. Right. But we hurt right. everybody else in the process because it becomes um, really the comments hurt, right? They hurt a lot. Right. And so 
but but I like your idea, the fact that you want to target a specific group of people who are mourning their loved ones is right. awesome, is an awesome, because I don't think there's other people who are doing it. One thing I could suggest to you as a coach is that start a Facebook group or have you joined other Facebook groups that have the same content? And, you know, invite people to see your web page and see if there's, you know, then you can start building a following, you know. I don't know. I mean, that would be the one way to do it. Right. I don't I do know. You have a web page. Yeah, but have a group. Start a group in Facebook. I and... have a group. Oh, you do? I did. Yeah, I do. It's called New Young Widow. Oh, okay. So then, <laughs> so, but there are people who are joining. And do you find people who are joining this group are, are, in that same boat they've lost a loved one so far i haven't really got any new members most of them are family and friends mostly friends yeah so um you know i i'm not sure how you would market but you know let people know that you know or have you gone to churches where they have these kind of groups and say you know i'm doing this would you like to be a supporter well, I have not gone to any church groups or anything. I am not highly religious and don't care for organized religion. <laughs> I've had some bad experiences with that too. <laughs> so I will work on it though. No, I mean, the reason I'm saying this is just a suggestion because you want to find a follower. The people, yeah. can, they don't want to come, you know, most people... Most people don't like to go speak in a group. Like if you're having a group, then it's like, why am I in this group? Why should, why should I even go? But right. people who are grieving, if they find out, you know, another thing to do was to go to funeral homes, you know, and pass out your pamphlets or flyers that if you want to talk, I'm here. You might gain some uh, following there too. I, I don't know. I thought, I've thought about that too. Oh, great. I have. <laughs> That's amazing, guy. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> no, I but mean. I can't drive yet. <laughs> yeah, because the thing is, you know, in, in our culture, in my culture, you know, if there is a death, there is no support group. There is nothing, mm -hmm. that, nothing in the church that helps us out. And I've seen, you know, and the widows are supposed to kind of shroud themselves and keep away from the whole world and males altogether for a certain amount of months that allows them to grieve. But I don't think grieving is that kind of, I mean, I don't think that's the right way to grieve. You can't be alone. You have to, you want to scream at somebody. You I don't either. Cry. You want to break something, you know. I mean, that you can do in your privacy of your own home, but, right. you know, you are angry, you know. Right. I tell my husband all the time that, you know, if you die, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> it because, you know, it's like, I didn't sign up to be alone. Right. If you die, I'm going to kill you. And he says, he just laughs because he says, if I'm dead, how are you going to kill me? He says, I'm going to bring you back and then I'll kill you. This exactly. is the purpose. <laughs> but, you know, it's a matter of speaking. But the thing is, right. the first one is acknowledgement, you know, the acknowledgement mm -hmm. of the fact that he's this person that you are with is gone. And the second one, the second step is anger because that's how you feel. And until you get those things out of your system, you can't just... You just can't move on. You cannot. Exactly. Exactly. I've seen women who've lost their husbands, you know, when I go to church, I've seen them and they are, they pretend like life is all hunky dory and, you know, oh, I'm, I, I just take care of the grandkids and my daughter is here. It's not the same. You know, it's not the same. Right. So, right. And I, I understand. I mean, you've, you've, you've come a long way. You've, you know, it's, I mean, for somebody, I mean, I commend you that you've been in this position for a year. I'm going almost. almost a year. And, you know, you've already started looking outside that box where you're starting mm -hmm. to see the blooming of, of, you know, other things that can be possibilities in life. I know right, exactly. I was coaching um, a 75-year-old lady who has a PhD in religious studies, and she has 
opened my eyes to a lot of things. You know, it was who's coaching who, right? But uh -huh. she was angry when I first spoke to her. The first two sessions were so rigid. I couldn't understand why she was so mad. And she didn't, she just was tired of the fact that she had to start and do everything again herself. And as we talked and, you know, as yes. our sessions progressed, yes. she became more merrier, more cheerful, because now she's seeing the things on a different perspective. So it changed, helped her change that perspective too. And I think you have the same goal. Right. And I wish you luck, you know, because this is a very sensitive um, subject for most people. Right. And most people don't know how to approach it. And even people, I, I per se, if I see somebody's lost somebody, I don't know how to approach them. What do I say to them? You know, exactly. Say, please accept yes. my condolences, but that's it. Because right. it's not me that's lost that person. Right. Exactly. And, and so you know the internal feelings that you've gone through. And... I, you know, you're a very strong woman is all I can say is that you've gone through this and I'm, there, there are women out there or men Thank you, you have to be. I mean, this is something, that is a natural process. You and I both know that and it's going to ultimately mm -hmm. happen. However, how you embrace it, if you will, is different. Uh -huh. so, exactly. Um, so what are your next steps? I mean, you've got your website up, you've got thought about all these other places, um, the funeral homes and, you know, groups and all that. So what's your next step? I mean, what are you going to do now? Well, I have started writing a few eBooks that I would like to offer on my website. I would like to write some e-courses and I am very interested in coaching other widows, other stroke survivors, anybody having issues, really. I mean, I'm pretty much an open book, so they can ask me anything. They can tell me anything, but that's where I want to head. Awesome. Awesome. So you primarily want to focus on co coaching people who've lost their significant others, not primarily just widows, but also widowers? Yes. Yeah. I can, I'm open to widows, widows, widowers, whoever. Okay. I'll talk and, to everybody. Okay. And then, um, so per, the best, I think the politically correct term is their significant other, regardless of sex. <laughs> right? True. 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 And, uh, <laughs> and then you want to talk about stroke. So yes. um, have you looked up other uh, health and wellness places where You've talked about uh, stroke victims or, uh, you know, what your experience was, how the recovery went. I mean, what would you talk about stroke? I have talked to a lot of, um, well, therapists, nutritionists, wellness coaches. I've talked to several. Um, I think the thing I want to focus on with strokes is the, the effect that it has on other family members, how they don't understand what's going on. They just don't understand. They don't get it. And right after you have a stroke, you're not really in a position to explain it to them. It takes a while for you to get your brain function back and your memory back. And it's a long recovery process. And I don't think that they understand that. And that's a lot of where the family family communication comes in. They have preconceived notions and they're not correct. So do you think that the health system should have more support groups or do they have anything like that or? Um, I'm sure they probably do. I wasn't aware of it then. I'm not really aware of it now. Um, but that is one thing that should definitely be offered. They okay. did have a, I don't know if he was a chaplain, if he was a therapist. I don't know what he was. Came in and talked to me. Um, I think that was after the first hospital visit. See, I'm still not clear. I'm pretty sure it was after the first hospital visit because they thought I might be depressed. They thought... Oh, Everybody thought I had a stroke because my husband died. It had nothing at all to do with that. 
Um, it was because I had no potassium in my body and that affected my heart and my blood pressure. And that's the only cause for it. So, but he, he talked to me and I talked to him and he said, I think you're fine. I don't think you're depressed. I think you're ready to move on. So are you, um, are, are you taking potassium supplements then? Oh yes. Yes. Okay. Huge, nasty potassium pills. They're awful. <laughs> They're awful. Does a banana help? <laughs> no. Okay. So no. But but if I start taking them, then I can help prevent it maybe? Take some bananas? If, if your potassium is low. I never knew I had low potassium, so. Okay. So that's something to check because this is something that can affect yeah. you, right? It is. Yes. Yes. Wow. So you have had a very roller coaster of an ear. Talk to me a little bit about your grandbaby. Um, like I said, she turned one in January. She's walking. She's starting to babble. I haven't seen her a whole lot since it's been winter and it's been nasty here. Um, she's just a lot of fun. Great. So she, she's the uh, sunshine in your life. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to share with us? Oh my gosh, I could go on for hours, but that's probably enough for today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we men, we can talk. Yeah, well, this that last year was just so jam packed full of crap. <laughs> it's kind of unbelievable. So, how is this year shaping up? This year is much better. Um, it's much better. Okay, great, great. Okay, okay. So I, um, you have nothing else to share. I am going to stop the recording. Okay. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. And thank you for sharing it. the story. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you.